Hello everyone and welcome to the Wolf Den. My name is Foltonelda and this is the start of our blind Coromon Let's Play with the added challenge of a Nuzlocke Light. Now if you've got no clue what Coromon is then it's best explained as being similar to a monster capture game like Pokemon and kind of in the style of the first few generations before stuff went 3D and began to lose its charm for me as the games got easier and much more handholdy. Which is where the concept of Nuzlocke challenges came into play for me. You could only capture a single Pokemon per route, had to nickname them, and in case one of them would faint, you would no longer be allowed to use them. I pretty much always failed those playthroughs because I'm not exactly the smartest or best player out there, and those mistakes were quickly made, which resulted in me never actually making it past the fourth gym, but I still love the concept of it all. So that is where we are right now. I have only played the first 30-ish minutes of the Coromon demo without having seen anything beyond the first route, so it might be a horrible idea to do a blind playthrough and a Nuzlocke challenge, but that is why I've got my slightly easier Nuzlocke Light challenge in mind. In the end, it is all fun and games, and our self-imposed rules might be slightly altered as we go on if things still end up being too difficult, so don't see this as a totally hardcore playthrough where failure means the end of the let's play, because I intend to finish this game, even if it means adding a new rule so that we can revive our Coromon later on. And in the worst case scenario, I can always drop the Nuzlocke idea and just continue like normal. But anyway. The Coromon Nuzlocke Light playthrough I've got in mind has its own rules, so let's go over them so we know what we're dealing with. Rule number one, only a single Coromon may be caught per route. For these encounters we shall be using an item called the Lux Lure, which we will obtain in a little bit. You'll see how it works when we try to capture our first Coromon. I'm not sure how it will work though when dealing with different cave floors, but if the game allows me to use it, then I'll use it. Rule number two, rarer, potent and perfect Coromon, which kind of serve as uncommon and rare shiny versions of the Coromon we see, are seen as additional encounters and may be caught freely whenever we find them. Though to not end up with a full team of potent versions, we're setting ourselves a limit of a combined total of two potent or perfect Coromon in our party. Rule number three, every Coromon we catch must be given a nickname. This is done so that we develop a stronger bond with them, and it will make it hurt even more when they accidentally end up dying. Which brings us to rule number 4, when a Coromon faints in combat, it is considered dead and may no longer be used. And finally, rule number 5, though this is mostly a failsafe rule in case stuff goes horribly wrong, should an unfortunate team wipe occur where we end up losing all our Coromon in a single battle, Six dice will be rolled to determine which party members have perished. Basically, it gives the lucky few a second chance at life, and also means I don't have to spend even more hours off camera trying to rebuild the team. There still will be casualties as a result, but it will be a bit less devastating, I hope. So, that is the Nuzlocke Light rule set which we will be using during this Let's Play, and with that, I figure we've done enough introductions. One final warning though, I am a slow player who loves to explore, so don't expect me to rush through everything, and do expect that I'm going to take my sweet time. But anyway, let's start this adventure, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Rise and shine, honey. Didn't you hear your alarm? Well, I did, but then I moved it five minutes ahead so I could just get this last five minutes of sleep. Don't close your eyes again. Today's your first day of work at Lux Solace. Uh, uh, again, referring to the five minutes, my life is beginning. Uh, why don't you put on something nice? You want to make a good impression? I do agree with that. If it is your first day on the job, well, for starters, be sure you're on time. Secondly... Leave a good first impression, which brings us directly towards the character creation. And uh, it might be the fact that I am used to Pokemon not always having that many options for character customization in the beginning. 
I do love the fact that there's quite a few options right over here. And there's also a randomization option, so you know, randomization. Some fun stuff can always come out of it. But give me a few seconds and I'll create our character for this playthrough. Uh, go with the glasses or go with the headphones. Both are kind of cool. Both could work. I'll take the headphones. Headphones are fine. Thank you very much. And I'm assuming that there is an option to change our outfit in the future as well. Because when we go to our bag and our items, there is a clothing tab. And we can remove our headphones whenever we want. So if we're not happy with something, we can easily just disable them and or enable them. And no, before you ask, you can't remove the red hoodie. But yeah, uh, as I have mentioned, I did play the first 30 minutes of the demo before, so I do know where to find a thing here or there, like, for example, our pocket money that we've been saving. Now's the time to use it. It's not a lot, but hey, 500 gold can mean the difference between life and death in the nearby future. And likewise, I'm fearing for all the jokes and puns and reverence that this, that this game might throw at me, because, for example, this one. I still remember the day I won this poster. It was a triumph, and I made a note, it was a huge success. But yeah, uh, I don't think there's anything else in this room that we can get, except for, well, basically a little mini game. Which game shall I play? Swarmy Rush. I was not, I was not aware that Flappy Swarmy was a thing, but that will be a thing in the future apparently, but no, Swarmy Rush. Swarmy is one of the Cormon that we will encounter in the nearby future, but hey, it's the start of the Let's Play, so... Let me see if I can get a real quick score, as long as we don't have a big boulder right at the beginning. I hate a start like that, because you don't have an awful lot of speed, meaning that that jump is a lot harder than it, than it will be in the future. A score of 29. I will not accept a score of 29. No, we will accept that. Let me really quickly get myself a high score. Well, I'd say that it is a very good score, and also my eye. I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> Focusing that much on the moving screen, oh boy. Anyway, I don't like to try again. That is a perfect high score. Thank you very much. Much better than the one I started with. Ah, anyway, moving onwards. Our mother's bedroom. Yeah, I know we're not supposed to be here, but we're definitely not supposed to read her diary, but yeah. Oh, dear diary. Tomorrow is what we've been waiting for. It's the first day of Fultonella's dream job. Oh, I'm so proud. I better hurry and make a reservation at Fultonella's favorite breakfast place. Well, that would certainly be a nice surprise. Uh, it's mom in her younger years. She's so pretty. Uh, meanwhile, our dad, well, we can't exactly look at his picture. Because, of course, you can't. Uh, anyway, moving on. I don't think there's anything else here hidden. Nah. Morning, mom. Morning, uh, what was your name again? Dexter. I broke a swimmy rush high score last night. Well, I just got a new one, so good luck trying. Haha, <laughs> beat it by your little bro. Oh, what a lovely day it is. Ooh, hey, what's behind here? Unplug. Nah, I'm not that bad of a big brother. <laughs> anyway, morning, Mom. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Fulton Elder. You're looking sharp. Thank you. Oh, you must be so excited. You're finally going to become a Luxolus battle researcher. Uh, to celebrate your new job, I made a reservation at your favorite breakfast place. Oh, well, a surprise. I did not expect that, Mom. Thank you. Oh, we can head there before going to the station. That sounds great. Oh, come on. Next to dear, please keep an eye on the cakes in the oven. Okay, Mom. Yes, Dexter. Do what you're told. Uh, there are cakes in the oven, but these need a little more time. Yeah. Anything else here? No, don't think so. I can't read all of these, but you can if you have enough time, but yeah. It's time for us to move on. A delicious breakfast later.
So here we are, Fulton Elda, at the starting line of your own adventure. Oh, look, you all grown up and choosing your own path in life. Well, that's the thing, Mom. Every bird has to spread their wings at some point. Some sooner, others later. You never know. I'm a little sad to see you go. But I'm also very proud of you. Ever since you were little, you've been dreaming of working for Lux Solace. I know you're ready for this. And that's why I got you a little something. I've been saving up for this day, so you don't have to worry about gold. Here you go. Don't spend it all in one place. Uh, chances are I will spend it all in one place, but I'll make good use of it. Yes, thank you, Mom. That's very sweet. Oh, glad to hear that, honey. Oh, look. I can see the train approaching. Which means our time is limited here. And this guy with the orange hair? That's basically me. When the train arrives, you pick a position and hope that you're right in line with the doors opening. And then you turn out to be like one, two meters off. But it works. Oh, do you have everything you need? Your backpack, your ticket, clean underwear? Mom, of course I've got clean underwear. Don't worry, I'm old enough to take care of myself. I'm 28. Oh, the train's about to depart. You better get on before it leaves without you. Yeah, you know they will. But first, a big hug. Thanks, Mom. I'll be sure to call. Or text. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, dear. And thus, our adventure has started. And with us being at the end of the line, only one other person in the train with us. And instantly leaving. Well, you're in a hurry. Normally, the normally the trains always stay a little bit, bit at the end. They switch conductors and such. Drivers, yeah. Anyway, as I mentioned, I have played this game before, the first 30 minutes of the demo, so I do know that some stuff might still be around here, like... It's not much, but hey, 50 golds. It's still around here. Nice. Ah, so what else have we got? Trade departure times, but I'm not leaving anytime soon. Well, that's certainly the idea. So, moving on. I do wonder, though. Uh, can I see? Yeah, we have a world map. We came all the way from the left, and we're right now over here. This is going to open up the further we get, but what's all the way to the left? Is this a case of, hey, compare this to the Kanto region of Pokemon, and to the left might be a Johto region? Maybe for a second game? Maybe we go there in this game? Who knows? But it does make me curious. Anyway, greetings. Jim. At Lux Solace, we offer trains the opportunity to customize their experience. Most trains pick the normal difficulty, but selecting a higher difficulty could be worth the challenge. Certainly, which is why we have got our own rules in place. And yeah, there are items hidden everywhere. And if I remember correctly, there's one right over here on the couch. Meaning I'm not going to find all the hidden stuff. I'll have to randomly stumble upon it. And 350 gold. Again, it's not much, but in the end, it will work out nicely. Greetings. Hello and welcome to the Luxalus campus. How may I assist you? Uh, my name is Fulton Elda. I'm starting out as a battle researcher today. Oh, a new colleague. How lovely. I think you'll have a wonderful time working for Luxalis. Please give me a moment while I check your registration. Aha, I see. It looks like we still need to know your preferred difficulty. With this, we can personalize your adventure. And most trainers use a normal difficulty, which I would recommend for the regular experience. Take this handbook and read it well. It explains the differences of each difficulty in detail. Thank you very much. I'll read it carefully and very quickly. Basically, yeah, different difficulty options built into the game. With also an easy mode, which allows you to fully restore your Cormon's HP whenever they level up. Shop items being 50% cheaper. And if a Cormon faints, you don't need something like a revive. You just use a potion or a healing cake in this case. Then you've got the normal difficulty, you've got a build in hard mode, which if one of your Cormon faints, it will leave your squad. And uh, we're not going to make use of this, even though I will apply those rules myself, because you also can't escape from any battles. And I would like to escape from wild battles if I deem it necessary. 
And then there's also an insane mode with all the previous rules, but also you can't use any recall items, so no escape rope things. And you may only catch one Cromon in each area. Again, there is something for that. Because you've got the preset difficulties, but also the custom one, and we will be making use of that. And this is perfect for anyone who wants to customize their own experience, because you can turn on SP recovery on level up, with SP being basically, basically the PP system from, from Pokemon, where you had PP for every move, but now it's a single stamina bar. Uh, shop items being cheaper, reviving cakes, no thanks. We're going for the harder sections. You can even limit the amount of trainer hub visits that you can do for recoveries. So, even to zero, there are just so many options. But what we are looking for is, um, let's see, catching. Catching rule, I want one per area, except for potents are perfect. Thank you very much. And I don't want prevent catching duplicates, because if we encounter the same... Coromon, but it is a potent and we still can't catch it, unfortunately. So that will work. There also are randomizations available. Again, there is a lot of replay value with stuff like this, and I love it. But for now, that should do the trick. That's an interesting configuration. Thank you. I've contacted our difficulty engineer. He will help us configure your experience. Oh, there he is already. Right on time. Hello there. So, you've decided to have a challenging experience? How exciting! I'm the engineer that will keep track of your difficulty experience. Here, you will need my invention. I've named it the Lux Lure. Thank you. You will need to use that Lux Lure to trigger an encounter with a wild Cormon you may catch. You can only do this once per area. This means you're not allowed to catch any wild Cormon except for potent Cormon and perfect Cormon. Doesn't matter where you use the Lux Lure. All Cormon species in the entire area will hear it. Be careful though, if the Cormon you encounter faints, it will be gone. Well, that's all I have to inform you about. I'm sure you can handle all that. A challenge should be a challenge, am I right? It certainly is. Good, I'll go and make the necessary adjustments now. Good luck, you'll need it. I certainly will need it. Thank you. Oh, you can return to that computer at any time to change your difficulty. So if at any point we decide to want to change something, it can be done right over there. Same goes for your own playthrough. <sighs> Great. Uh, before we continue, could you tell me if you've followed a Luxolus trainer course before? Well, technically I have, but no, this is my first time. Oh, thank you. Every battle researcher requires a gauntlet in order to carry Coromon safely around Velua. Uh, about the whole have you followed it before it basically speeds up the whole intro but because this is a, a first playthrough and many people will see this for the first time i'm gonna put it all in anyway for the gauntlet we have several colors variations from which you can choose one moment please we have the gala blue variant the parabit green variant and last but not least the infinix red variant please choose the one you like most uh i think I think red kind of suits with the outfit that I've got, likewise with green. I think I'm going to go with green. And again, we sure do look great. Thank you. Got us up the gauntlet. Good choice. That one goes well with your eyes. Well, uh, thank you. How do you know? Uh, please take this Lux Recall RC. This state-of-the-art device allows for a streamlined training experience. Thank you. Your first stop will be the Cormon Lab, where Gideon will help you get started. You can find him in the next building over. Have fun and shine bright. Thank you, shine bright to you too. And was it over here? No, there was something. There it is. Foggy Scent. Thank you. So, Foggy Scent. Let me take a quick look. Uh, also, we can disable the gauntlet if we don't like the appearance of it. Uh... Yeah, Luxler. Lure a wild Cormon inhabiting the current area which you have not caught before. And Foggy Scent. Has a chance to apply haziness on wild Cormon for 3 minutes. Uh, I think that meant some sort of confusion. Uh, can't fully remember, but we'll figure it out. They should give us something like a condition handbook at some point as well. And likewise, is it still here? Yes, it is. Want an HP cake? Which is basically the potions. 
with this one restoring 20 HP. Ah, Luxolus. Welcome to the Luxolus campus where rookies become professionals. I'd certainly hope so. Neil. Hmm? Want some advice from a new battle researcher? Well, I once forgot where I had to go for my quest. But then I remembered I could check my logbook in the menu to see where I had to go. Keep that in mind if you get lost. Basically, right over here. Logbook. Prologue. Getting at Cormon Lab will continue my onboarding as a new battle researcher. Thank you very much. So this is where we need to be, the Cormon Lab. I'll explore the rest of town later. First up, let's get ourselves our very first Cormon. Ah, oh, you must be the new battle researcher I've heard so much about. Uh, my name precedes me already? Uh, Gideon is the one that'll get you up to speed. Let me fetch him for you. Gideon! Hmm, looks like Gideon is out for lunch. No, oh, but no worries. I can take a quick break to get you everything you need. Follow me. Well, thank you very much for taking that break. Ah, first of all, let me grab you a data chip. Thank you. Uh, this chip is a nifty chip for your gauntlet that will record every Cormon related action you take. All the data is sent back to us where it is analyzed right here in this very lab. As an incentive for sending us oodles of interesting data, you will be rewarded handsomely of course. Milestones and promotion bonuses can be redeemed right in your menu. Isn't that handy? It's pretty simple stuff. I'm sure you'll figure it out as you get more comfortable at the job. Yeah, I will. Alright, alright. You're almost good to go. But you wouldn't get far without our generous employee starter package. Including a few spinners for, for which you can catch Cormon with, HP cakes, SP cakes, and a few escape ropes in the form of Lux Recall and Type Manual. Now the Type Manual in there will be especially invaluable throughout your journey. Now so just taking a quick gander at it before setting out. Basically, yeah. There are seven base types for Cormon, meaning normal, electric, ghost, sand, fire, ice, and water. But other than that, there are also six skill-only types, which also have their strengths, weaknesses, or lesser damages, resistances, and such. Meaning magic, foul, heavy, air, poison, and cut. So basically, only seven Cormon types, but a few more with skills added to it. Well then, I know how excited you must be to get your very own Corwan. Nelson will provide you with one downstairs. That's pretty much it for me. Now I gotta get back to work now. New traits don't discover themselves, you know. They certainly don't know. But meanwhile, hi. Christopher. When I got my nibble guard, it had a different color than what I'm used to. That's despite my interest. Now I'm dedicated to uncovering every possible variation of Corwan. That's going to be a long journey because, yeah, the potence might be a 2% chance to encounter or something. The perfects, on the other hand, are like 0.03%. Pretty rare. Nicholas, this screen updates whenever one of our battle researchers achieves a milestone. Really? Well, they're all over the place if that keeps updating like that. How many battle researchers does Lux Solids have? The volume of data we obtain is mind-boggling. I imagine that, yeah. Sid, over the years we've gathered so much data on skills. Thanks to this, our scientists were able to embed some of them into skill flashes. Basically TMs, and can I take a look at your patter bits? I can't. Afra, hold on tightly to that Lux Recall RC. It enables us to bring you back to the Lux Solace campus in an emergency. Yeah, so if we ever get trapped in, let's say, the blizzard, sandstorm, heavy rain, thunder, please get me out, basically. Anyway, I believe this is where we needed to be in the long run. This was where Nelson was in the basement. So, our first Coromon. Hi. Oh, the smell. First impression is important. I did put on deodorant, right? The smell of a starry-eyed battle researcher! Here to receive that first Cormon. Ah, oh, just hold on tight for a moment while I finish updating the Cormon connectifier. That should do it. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Nelson, head of the Cormon lab. Let's connect you to a Cormon. 
who run a series of tests to find the one which is most suited to your personality. Well, I can't wait. We've been going on for long enough right now, it's time to get our core on. That's the enthusiasm I love to hear. Let me just hop over and take some quick measurements. Let me see... Hmm... Oh? Why are you saying oh when looking at my backside? Okay... So measurements what for exactly? How does it matter what my measurements are? Oh, now comes the fun part. The machine is ready to scan your brainwaves. Please enter. Yeah, is that going to be safe though? Please step into the machine. Uh, please keep still during the scan, otherwise you might lose an arm. Or worse, damage my machine. Again, this is safe. No, it isn't. Uh, Alright, let's do this thing. Analysis comments. So what exactly is this machine getting from data from me? I will now ask you a series of questions while this machine measures your brain activity. How exactly does this work with getting myself a Coromon? Question 1. You encounter a wild Coromon. What is your first reaction? Well, on one hand I'd like to see what it does. On the other hand I would normally try to capture it. But also attack it right away because you want to capture it and want to weaken it first. But I'd probably see what kind of type it is first so see what it does basically. No, I see. I would do that too. Question 2. What's your motivation for becoming a battle researcher? I want to tame the strongest Coromon, I want to protect the Velowell's environment, or I want to earn a good living. Oh, basically earn a good living. I mean, with a good living, you can then have hobbies like taming the strongest Coromon or protecting the environment. So, earning a good living for starters. Well, some good motivation right there. Question 3. Which of these three attacks appeals the most? It appears to toughen up a fiery breath. Uh, what I'm thinking is toughen up would be increasing your defense, fiery breath is just normal attack, inner peace might be possibly increasing your attack value, which probably would mean I'd go for inner peace, set up your Coromon with strong stats and then go for the kill. Uh, not my favorite, but let's continue. Question 4, which of these colors appeal the most to you? I'd probably say crimson red. That's the same color as my living room. Interesting choice, honestly. And the final question described your ideal first date. Well, that's rather personal. How does this matter in regards to getting a Coromon? But first date, definitely not skydiving. Candlelit dinner might be a little bit too awkward with random silences and whatnot. So I'm going for a museum tour because if there isn't silence, you can always be distracted by the artwork. Ah, oh, so romantic. Hold on, what's your step? Well, that wasn't so hard now, was it? Yeah, I didn't lose an arm, luckily. Yeah, piece of cake. Oh, fantastic. You must be excited to hear the results. Stand in front of the hatchets when you're ready. Hatches, not hatchets, but there. Uh. Here are your options. Announcing the Fire Coromon Taruga. This Coromon is very strong, loves to battle and can learn powerful moves. Secondly, the Nibblegar, a water type Coromon. This Coromon has a high endurance in battles and is able to outlast most other Coromon. And finally, the Ice Coromon, Cup Zero. This Coromon is a jack of all trades, the perfect balance between offense and defense. And now the result of your analysis. The algorithm shows multiple options that would be a good match. You and the Ice Coromon, Cup Zero would go well together. And with the Water Coromon Nibblegar, you'll surely get far. That makes it hard to choose, right? Oh, why don't you take a closer look? Trust your instincts and pick the one you like most. Yeah, basically this is gonna be a hard choice, because I like all three of them. But first up, let's inspect them a little bit in regards to their summary. So, we've got Taruga, who has Slam and uh Steam Layer. That's a new passive ability um, or trait that I'm not familiar with yet. The Coromon is protected by a layer of steam during a heat wave, increasing its special defense. I'm assuming heat wave is sort of like sunny day, maybe? Could be interesting, but won't happen often, I think. Uh, secondly, Nibblegar, Vigilant. When its HP drops below 25%, it becomes Vigilant, increasing its speed and accuracy. Could be nice in a pinch if we get in trouble. 
and finally Cap Zero Stoic. After taking super effective damage, the Coromon's defense or special defense increases by two stages depending on the type of damage taken. That's pretty good. Ooh, I certainly like that, but which of these three would I want to take? That I don't know. And for that, I think I'm going to leave it up to fate. I have got myself a little bit of a spinner over here, which will choose our Cormon for us with. Option number one being Taruga, option number two being Nibblegar, and option three being Cup Zero. Now the best choice, if we purely look at the traits they have, would probably be to pick Cup Zero, since the other two might not be all that useful at the start. But nonetheless, it is all up to fate, since I don't know what either of these three evolve into. I've not seen the evolutions yet, so I'm really curious for all three of them, which means it's all up to faith. And it will be Cup Zero. Barely not Taruga, but that is fine. So, Cup Zero, welcome to the team. The Jack of all trades will be ready for any situation. I certainly hope so. And of course, giving our Cup Zero a nickname, which will be. Uh, nicknaming them is going to be an issue. I'm gonna name you Coda. Cup Zero, the algorithm never lies. Well, theoretically, it did lie because, hey, what would you have said if I picked Taruga? Taruga was the second choice, almost. Oh, your Cup Zero seems to have the Stoic trait. Very useful indeed. But you won't get far out there with just one Coromon. Take this pad a bit for extra protection. Thank you very much. And now that you've got your Coromon, let's give that data chip of yours a test run. Now activate your Lux Regal RC to take us to the battlegrounds. Hold on! Gotta love teleportation. Which does make me wonder, what if someone else was standing over here? What would have happened if we teleported in their place? I do hope there are safeguards for that. Here we are. Are you prepared for your first battle? Uh, we're going to battle, and aren't you an expert? Like, you're going to crush me. Please go easy on me. Oh, don't worry. It will be a f uh, fight. I've brought my Taruga, which has the same level as your Cup Zero. And the helpful tip, if you hold down on your skills, you'll get a detailed overview of their effects. Be sure to try it out if you're ever confused with what a skill does. Good luck, Foltonelda. Give it all you've got. Give it your all. Ready? Let's jam. Nelson. So, we have an advantage over here. Our Coda and your Taruga are both the same level, but likewise do we actually have our Padder bits right over here. Uh, what do you have? We'll, we'll give this a nickname after this battle. Uh, you've got... Conductor. The Coromon charges when hit by an electric attack, increasing its speed. That's pretty handy. And in regards to attacks, Slam is just a normal basic tackle sort of style. And Feelers, find a weak spot on your opponent. And the next attack on the target deals 2.5 times damage, but cannot be a critical hit. And in regards to Coda, Basic Scratch, which is a cut skill. And Cute Post, lowering your defense. So, let's do this, okay? Um, meanwhile, you can also click on the Taruga nameplate and see what kind of typing they are, what they're weak to, like water and air skills. Not taking much damage from ice, fire, or heavy, so yeah. Anyway, I think I want to decrease your defense at least a little bit, meaning it makes it easier for me to hit you harder. And likewise, I don't want to lose Koda in the very first battle. That would be a very bad choice, so don't you dare and crit me, okay? Here we go. That's decent. I don't like that. I do have cakes. In an emergency, I can use cakes. So, please. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah, I do like that. I do like that. Yeah, go ahead, lower my defense even more. What's the chance of me missing this attack? Zero, because I have an accuracy of 100. So please, die. 
And obviously, I could have used my pad a bit in case of emergency, but that wouldn't have really made it fair in this case. It was a one-on-one, -on -one, sort of. And that means Koda to level 6. With your main focus being on attack right now, it seems. With Frost Jump, nice. Chop the target with Icy Teeth as a 10% chance of freeze targets. Thank you. Fultonella defeated Nelson. Impressive. And 94 gold. Not an awful lot, but it's something. Well done. You and your Cormon are going to make quite a team. I just know it. Remember that you can visit the Trader Hub at any time to restore your squad back to full health. I'm going to pay a lot of visits to the Trader Hub. Thanks for the tip. Am I ready to catch some Cormon on my own now? Absolutely. You can start by exploring Radiant Park. I'm on it. Oh, wait, there's one more thing. I advise you not to pass that bridge yet. The Cormon past that point are generally less uh, beginner friendly. Larry from the R&D lab can hook you up with a gauntlet module that will keep you safe. You can find the lab in Radiant Park. Best of luck, Fulton Elda. I'll be at the Cormon lab if you need me. Shine bright. Shine bright. So, that brings us to our pad bits. Oh, and before we do that, uh, milestones. They just popped up during the battle. This is what they were talked about with sending data and such. Uh, defeat one battle researcher, 50 experience, not enough to level up, but at every point we level up, we do get our promotion bonuses. And I don't know what most of these are. These are skill flashes, I believe, serving as TMs. I think they're only usable once, so I'm not sure how to get more of them. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you can work towards, and there is more available than there was in the demo, so that's always a good choice. Well, anyway... Patter bits. Let's give you a nickname, shall we? And seeing how you're kind of a bug with a helicopter backpack of sorts and the goggles, I am naming you Gadget. Inspector Gadget, but Gadget will suffice. And obviously, I do want to check out the database for you real quick. Same with Cup Zero. Cup Zero cover their body in a thick layer of snow to stay warm throughout the whole year. Taruga has to adapt by growing stronger since. It has to grow stronger jaws since their head grew too big to fit its shell. Meaning it's going to be a strong attacker in the long run, and Nibblegar's ring is known to be extremely important to them. No Nibblegar has ever seen without one. And that leads us to Armado? Because we spotted this one in the Swarmy Rush game. Armado are always eager to fight. They sometimes even attack humans if there are no Coromon around. So Keep an eye on that one, also a bit, pretty strong attacker by the looks of things. And where is... Padabit, there we are. Padabit are popular amongst Lux Solos researchers as lab assistants, due to their customizable intelligence. Customizable in the sense of, hey, I'm dumb, I'm going to make my Padabit smart so he makes up for my dumbness? Or he matches up to your own intelligence? Because I prefer to have a smart partner. And do we have anyone else? No, doesn't look like it. Okay. Well, that's fine. Anyway, that means we've got ourselves Koda and Gadget and lots of stuff to do. So, let's get to it. And so, our Nuzlocke adventure has finally begun. However, without fully grasping the type chart and without knowing what lies ahead, anything can happen. Will our loss be many or few? And who will be the first to fall? <laughs> <laughs>